Welcome to this week's work, The Left Side. I am joined by video entrepreneur, uh, the man behind the camera, Mr. Mark Ashley from Mark Ashley Films. Um, as we were talking about before I hit record, don't search on Google. Well, if you want to do, but, you know, <laughs> it, it could be a case of mistake. So, dude, are we good? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, tired, <laughs> good. Hard, working hard, tired, and more tired, but no, all good. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, well, you say you're working hard. Uh, obviously, you know, on the on the video footage, working at numerous shows. Um, mm. Obviously, I know you work in BWR a lot. Um, yes. Yeah. What, what have you been up to, dude? Well, you know, what's the uh, um, magic have you been capturing? It's been a bit quiet over Christmas. I had a bit of a break. I've been poorly, um, but I've just been working on loads of like um, I've done some end of year videos for. Uh, good friends of mine, like you might see them for Will Cruz, Scotty Rock. So I've done a few of those. Um, I've had a bit of a break from shows. Not done one since December because I wanted to spend a bit of time with family over Christmas. Um, and then yeah, back on at BWR this Saturday. Nice. Um, so yeah, obviously I, I, I kind of scoped out your YouTube channel before chatting to you. Mm. Uh, there's obviously a few videos on there. I don't actually kind of put. You probably you'll be uploading more and more as time goes on. Yeah. Kind of thing. I, I, I've kind of had loads of stuff on there. I kind of like before Christmas just restarted it and put a few things on there. But I do need to be more active on YouTube, and I will be this year. Yeah, it's just, a, um, it's just it's just a good place to showcase you, yeah, what you do, isn't it? Just, really? You know, when there's like so much social media and you got to post to Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it's just it's an endless loop. And I'm guilty sometimes of not promoting myself enough. And I've been told by people I don't promote myself enough. So this year, I'm everywhere. Hopefully. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And uh, obviously, yeah, I shared, um, I think it was BWR, mm. uh, Highlight Reel thing. Like you, that was on your YouTube channel. I shared that earlier, you know, on that Twitter. Was so show I did, yeah. it. That's it. So obviously, yeah, I put on there, you know, hit like, hit subscribe. You know, just look Pretty forward good. to see what else you, you post. Um, we'll talk BWR because obviously, you yeah. know, they're a huge promotion at the minute. You know, they came runners up to North in the uh, <laughs> promotion of the year. So, um what's it what's it like there obviously you know i kind of got wind of what you're doing prior to that at the promotion that i won't mention but we can talk about it at some point <laughs> you know. you can, we can we, we can delve into it it's fine yeah we'll talk about it in a bit um uh, so yeah I, um when i first started it was actually um the first show i ever filmed was in 2017 and it was for fight factory wrestling you know them yeah yes, yes. so hayden and becca there Offered me the chance, filmed a show, loved it. Did a few more shows for him, um, but I wasn't I wasn't filming the shows. I was doing like um, from the ring shots, that extra footage, just getting that extra footage in to build some experience up. And uh, yeah, look, those off the bat, just what angles to get, you know. Um, and then what out the out out the blue one there. I remember when it was. I was in the car park uh, to the hospital because we were finding out um, if we were having a boy or girl that day with our third child. And I remember, got a message from Adam. He says he's seen some of my stuff. Do I fancy coming to the show, the next show? And I was like, yeah, I'm well up for that. It's only up the road, Grimsby. It's the town I was born in. Let's do it. Nice. So, um, yeah. that's it. It just happens sometimes, you know, the pieces for. Obviously, so, like you sort of said, you know, he said he'd seen some of your stuff. Hmm. All it takes is, you know, the right person to see. And um, that gets the ball rolling. Um, but, but but really, they they become family. BWR, I love them. It's my favourite motion. I I'll always have a soft spot for them. I've been with them for, oh, yeah since two thousand. My first show was January two thousand eighteen. So early wow. yeah, um, six years ago. Yeah, wow. and I think I've missed. I've only missed um, since then probably about four shows, and that's it. All the rest I've done. I mean, that's mental because um, obviously, yeah. Anybody who doesn't know BWR, huge promotion really now. You know, they just seem to be gathering and gathering momentum. Um, the talent is awesome. The yeah. whole production is, you know, is awesome. From you know, from everything that I've seen of it, I've never had chance to go to a show, but I kind of try to check out what I can. You should get your ass down. <laughs> <laughs> I try, man. It's just uh, I think the last few have been on the same day as True Grits, unfortunately. So it's kind of like and that's your your local one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it, you see, and uh, it's all right for talent, you know, they can jump in a car and 
I think uh, True Grit and BWR have shared a lot of talent recently, you know, back and forth between shows. Yeah, so who's doing um, the, if they're on both, one's on early, go travel and do the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good that um, companies can do that. It's great because then everyone gets to see. That's I'm it. So, company yeah. That. Anybody who, who knows this, you know, I like to talk to the talent, I like to talk to the rest. I like, hmm. I just like the whole wrestling package. You know, it's not just what goes on in the ring, it's the production, it's the guys yeah. behind the cameras, you know, it's the guys in the stripes. Uh, everybody yes. plays a part to make a show. Um, Absolutely. Um, if, if, if one of the cogs are missing, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Exactly. And, and that's the thing as well, though, because obviously, you know, you guys really are key in the sense of, you know, the shows that happen, you've got your people who bought the tickets, people who are in-house, they're watching that show. But it's the people who are going to see it afterwards, like when it goes on yeah. YouTube or on DVD or, you know, however, streaming sites, what whatever anybody uploads them onto nowadays. Um, yeah. It's up to you guys to make the product look that good, that people want to t- want to travel to the next show or, you know, they want to yeah. keep paying the monthly subscriptions. You've got so, to keep it going. And, and it's also really good, like, when you're... Because I get really bad imposter syndrome. Like, I don't tell many people, but I, I do lack a lot of confidence sometimes. I, I come across as confident, but inside, it's kind of a facade. I don't really... I don't really think that so when i meet other people who do what i do um the the help they honestly the advice they give and we all help each other we all get on um when we all meet up it's cool and when we're on the same shows together it's really good um and yeah we just share ideas and like i'm always watching their footage to see oh that looked good or and i hope they can take something from me as well but because it just makes everyone better and improve well that's it i mean that's the general vibe that again you know from speaking to so many people it just seems like as compared to what it was like you know 10 years ago I don't know if you, you've heard stories from back in the day you know about the golden era or whatever yeah. people want to call it um there was a lot more it wasn't as positive people were didn't seem to be so keen to help everybody else out kind no of thing, and you know, i get it like, you want you want your spot don't you? you want all the bookings you want to be everywhere but it's kind of good because there's that many shows now. You can't do them all. <laughs> you can't. That's it. Um, you know, and there's, I love some some of the names like um, who I've worked with. I love working. I love, I love working with Brandon at BA Productions. I love him. Um, he's amazing. Um, Ant, the editor, is amazing. Really good guy. Help Helps anybody out. Can't do enough for people. Um, you've also got other people who I've not met yet, but um, Graps on Film. His footage looks really good. Um I always look forward to seeing these people's stuff, like when they drop videos and stuff. It's because um, you learn, you just you pick up little things every time. Um, I'd say the worst thing about it. I mean, I, I love editing, but it's a very, very lonely craft. It's a very, very hours spent, and it, it's very tedious sometimes. Um, people don't realise and understand how long it takes to put together a show. Right? They have no, no idea. It is crazy especially if you're putting in graphics, effects, replays, uh, sorting the sound out. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough, but it's fun. Love- it's, it's rewarding. When you see the final item come together, it's, uh, it's worth it. So, I mean, well, tell them, man, this is, this is the moment for people to appreciate you know, <laughs> the graft you put in, the hours. So, you know, like, if you're recording a show on a, you know, on a Saturday night, well, yeah. are we talking like a week? Are we talking a, you know, a few days? Are we talking a few days um... and then you go back to it because you're not quite happy with it? Obviously, you know, yeah, so 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 BWR is quite cool. They kind of put it up on demand. I sort of have it ready for a week, uh, get commentary, put it together, then send it, uh, upload it myself to their on demand, and then they promote it's available. Um, so yeah, I, I guess that's just a week, week and a half maybe. Um, but that's me having like maybe one day off of work, mucking in, doing it, and then a few evenings to finish it up. Um, sometimes longer. Um, one PW, for example. Uh, they wanted a quick turnaround, and that was a slog. I think it's seventy hours I put into one of them, just for just to put the final show together. Yeah, it was a it was a lot more graft. That was a lot of graft, but obviously worth it because you know they were they was on fight or uh, thriller. I think it's called now, whatever the actual app is called. But dude, that product was being seen by a, a shed load of people, and that was and you know good. that was awesome. yeah, it did, it did look good. Um, it was visually obviously it helped with um, the the um, the screen the lighting and all the other production that goes into it you know but yeah no it looks really good i was really happy with it um it turned out really well and 
if anything from that whole experience it taught me a lot you know I did pick up a lot from it selfishly and personally it was good it was good for me that's it and you got obviously silver lining you know it was a crappy mm. situation in that what you know what happened but if you can take some positives out of it oh that's, did. That's, the, that, that's the first thing that's the first thing I did else it would have all been kind of pointless but no yeah there's a lot that I, I learned and picked up and sort of like carrying on doing it um so yeah, I noticed on your YouTube thing, you the the uh, Dunkin' Donuts segment with uh, Colt Cabana <laughs> and Greg Burridge is on there. Uh, was I, you the <laughs> filmed it? I love doing that. Um, it was, uh, them two together are hilarious. Um, I'd met Greg before because um, we did a bit with him before they relaunched. So I spent a day with him at the dome filming him and stuff, so I got to know him. But no, Greg's Greg the character. He's he cracks me up every time I see him. Um, any especially with Colt yeah it was just a spur of the moment there was no like we're going to do this we're going to do that literally stuck the mic on them stuck a camera in front of them put an apron on them and told them right off you go and that was it it literally one 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 take one take wow but I suppose <laughs> yeah when you've got those guys like that I mean obviously any old school you know 1PW fans remember Team Shag uh probably like you know 15 years apart but they kind of do strive with those guys very professional uh, and they probably like, yeah, didn't miss a beat. You know, as soon as they got back together, it was yeah. like, yeah, there we go. You know, I, th- I think so. I knew of One PW the first generation of it. Um, never went to a show, but I was well aware of it. I had a couple of DVDs that I picked up, like in the later years. Um, so yeah, kind of, it was weird to see some of these, some of these people, you know, who I'd watched when I was younger, and I'm there, like, camera in front of them. It, the, the whole thing's surreal sometimes, and the more shows you do. It, it's not lost on me how how lucky I am. I'm kind of just this little geeky on a camera and I get to do all this stuff with all these cool people. <clears throat> the biggest one was um, uh, Rob Van Dam. Yes. So when, so when I was just in getting into wrestling, uh, I was about 14 and I had, I was ECW mad, right? There wasn't much of it sort of here. It was on sort of Bravo, a few channels, you know, you could pick up a few, a bit, a few bits of it. And in, some of the third party magazines and stuff, I cut them out, put them all on my wall. And I was obsessed with Van Damme. He's my favorite. Like I used to make like fan websites of him about stuff back in the day. Wow. And just being there and like film, yeah, it's surreal. It's crazy. But that's I think that's the first and only time I've really been like shit, you know. Starstruck. Just yeah. just pop like flabbergasted would be a would would be a word. Yeah. Cause I mean I've because both when I was growing up, I got into wrestling at a really young age. So, like, I was sort of 1990, 91 when I started watching it. Um, and I was really, I was always really big. And I didn't, I didn't, I was never a big fan of like Warrior, Hogan. I'd never really liked the big guys. I always liked the smaller guys. Um, Piper, Piper who Savage. Moved quick. Not, not, not so much Piper Savage. It was more, um, more Bret Hart, to be honest. Um, I loved um, Steamboat growing up. And in the later years, when I started to like the baddies a bit more, um, Rick Rude was one of my favourites. That is how to be a heel. Um, yes. I don't care what says, he could never have been face. Just, yeah, just he was the greatest heel of all time. Um, and his selling is unreal. Even looking He's, back now, nobody does it as good. Nobody. No. Everybody goes on about, like, you know, Piper or Mr. Perfect, you know, it was criminal that they were never world champion. Um, yeah. Rude is in that category for me as well. Um, I mean, the dude got a, a banging match out of the Ultimate Warrior, for God's sake. You know what I mean? That's like a few, a few bangers. Yeah. So that's terrible. Um, I, I think you'll be like me, you know, mentioned ECW. Um, again, obviously, very limited market over here, but um, I spoke to Shotty at South Pro recently and he was the same. I think we, we any ECW fan had three tapes. They had Barely Legal, uh, yeah. November to Dismember, and Living Dangerously. That yeah. was like the three ECW tapes that were on public. So <laughs> I'm just trying to I'm just trying to think. Because I, I th- the first time I ever heard of ECW, I was like I was I think I was camping like in 1995 somewhere down south, and I picked up a Power Slam magazine, and I remember seeing um, it was Mick Foley and. Uh, Funk uh, um, in Japan, the deathmatch tournament, and I was just fascinated with that kind of wrestling. I was like, "What is this? What is this?" And sort of a few years later, when ECW was around, I was like, "Oh, this is this is this is cool." I sort of, yeah, I kind of 
didn't watch WWE in years because I was like, obsessed with ECW. I loved it. I just honestly, I remember the, the series of matches with Van Damme and Jerry Lynn. I just watched them on repeat constantly. Um, on my little I've VHS just, tapes. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm sure it was like, yeah, November to Dismember or Living Dangerously had one of those RVD Jerry Lynn matches and it was just absolutely. Um, I watched, uh, I know it's not BWR, but I watched um, Speedball versus Leon Slater recently. And yeah, there's a bit in that. that. Yeah, there's a bit in that. Uh, and I was just like, that is just, it just reminded me of the Jerry Lynn RVD sort of. Yeah segment kind of thing i've just like, so, yeah. so, so so like going back i was like really into that and as i got older i started getting into like the big big men with charisma like i loved sid sid's another one who i mean that match he had with Shawn michaels at, um uh survivor series 96 when he won the belt and he was like the heel but he was being cheered he's the heel he's fist pumping the crowd it's unbelievable yeah, honestly it's unbelievable I, <laughs> it's so funny it cracks me up every time but yeah um yeah vader was cool um and then i, I kind of just I dropped out of wrestling you know when you start like, drinking that, that, yeah. that sort of age yeah you start going out sort of went off it a little bit but yeah kind of came back into it and just never left always, me really always kind of pulls you yeah, back in buddy. All, always pulls you back in and i was always <laughs> And it, it, I was, I mean, I started editing videos. Like, I know I picked up a camera six years ago, but I started editing videos about 16 years ago, like probably longer. I was just doing them, just little, like I'd get YouTube clips, piece it all together and do my own version of like a tribute to sort of like some wrestler, upload it. So I've always, I've always done it. And I just thought, do you know what? Let's just grab, grab a camera and let's see how it goes. Let's do it and see, see where it takes me really. There you go. Um, so often you mentioned Fight Factory before. Uh, yeah, yeah, massive shout out to Fight Factory. I've mentioned you know a few times on here. I've had a uh, pleasure of uh, just bigging them up as much as possible because I think they're a promotion that's under the radar, but people need to kind of put their eyes on. I just think they're, yeah. what they're doing is very, very good. Um, but yeah, obviously, as I say, you start off at Fight Factory, you mm. kind of fresh, you know, with the camera. Um, is it did you kind of take to it very easily or was it just is nerves it, was you kind of like very awkward moving around i get more it must be weird I get being more nervous now room. right i get more nervous now than i did back then wow yeah it's weird i i still get really nervous but it's it's more excited nerves you know it's not like oh i don't want to do it oh i don't, can't do it it's just like i don't know it's not it's not anxiety as such it's just like Adrenaline, I suppose. Yeah, but no, it's not. It's not like an awkward nervous. It's just like, oh, you know. <laughs> um, but no, just when I first did it, I was kind of like, because I was always when I first started, I wasn't doing the show. I was like in the background, sort of ringside, but I wasn't like the main person. Like, it allowed me to get the shots I, I, I wanted. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I could move where I want and I could get the angles I wanted, which is great because I, I prefer that type of filming. Um, it depends because what company you work with. Some pe some people want the broadcast style, stand there perfectly straight, which is cool. Um, but I like to zoom in as to drop in someone, you know, or twist it or tilt or that sort of thing. Um, I just think it's more fun. I don't know. I think I just prefer it. But I, li I like always of doing it. Um, but I, that would be my if when I've got free reign basically to do whatever I want. That's my favourite. That's it. I mean, and then you should sort of say, you know, there's not, I don't think there's any one right way. It's like, you know, no, I'm, a massive, they're all cool. I'm a massive film, I'm a massive film geek, you know, I, I love all genres and all sort of shooting styles. Mm. Uh, and I wouldn't say one was better than the other. I think yeah. as long as it, you know, as long as it elevates what you're, what you're recording or it elevates as long the as it works task for the, the task yes. in hand. Yeah. 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 You, you, don't, you don't want to go off left field with it, especially if it's not needed, but I don't know. It's, it, it, yeah. I just like having a camera in my hand, you know. <laughs> just, yeah. I just I don't know. It's, it's just I feel weird when I haven't. But no, I'm looking forward to getting back on it this week with BWR. Can't wait. Yeah. Just don't ever do the Michael Bay diagonal rotational slow motion thing. <laughs> that, that is the wrong. Or, that is the wrong wrong thing in films. Fucking hate when they do them. Oh, I've just thought I could do. I've <laughs> I wanted to do it as a joke, but sort of like get ten cameras on a show, right? And just do a Kevin Dunn special. Just go. <laughs> 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 
just anybody watching it, just put on like a, a warning beforehand. You know, if you've it got makes... nervous disposition, just. I had to like stop watching it because of it. I had to stop watching it because oh, I, really? I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't handle the takes on WWE. It's driving me crazy. It was like I was trying to focus on it. It was like there, 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 there. But it's like three cuts for what a half a move. So if someone was coming off the ropes. It was like shot, 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 change. I was like, I want to see it. I want to see the move. I don't stop changing camera angle. <laughs> well, that leads me to it, right? Because obviously, you know, when I'm working with the talent, I ask them, you know, are they able to enjoy wrestling as a fan, or do they do they sit there and critique it? You know, I ask the refs if they're able, if they get distracted by piss poor, you know, refing in a match. So yeah. obviously, you just answered, you know, if the editing is is shady, you know, can that just totally throw you out of the enjoyment of a match? No, WWE did does because it's too much i find w their product's too clean and it's too choppy and it's too it's too produced you know it's too by by the book and it's just i don't know it's just not my style of it i just i prefer watching like old dingy do you know what i mean just like good quality but in in a in a smaller venue there's a fewer cameras where you can actually see what's going on um i do prefer it um i like the way aew shot to be fair um i really like the angles they use um yeah. i know a lot of people criticize it but i prefer watching it um and also tna their stuff looks great um they're yeah they're just their stuff looks really good they, they let things flow a lot more and they're not they're not choppy um and they go really wide as well on a few occasions so you can just yeah. see everything so rather than I don't, I'm not big on sort of like zooming right in when there's an impact of a move where you miss half of it. If you can let it, yeah. But you can have sort of movement, but just don't zoom in right on it on impact. Do you know what I mean? I get it, I get it, yeah. <laughs> um, so, like you sort of said, you know, there's, you want to produce it and you want to edit it, but you don't want to overproduce it because it's just like you're doing it for the sake of doing it because you can kind of thing sometimes. Keep it, and it's like, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Yeah. Honestly, that's the, I, 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 in the early days, I was going a bit off and going a bit. Oh, I just changed it. Da, 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 da. I was like, I don't need to. And Adam, uh, when we were doing a one PW, he was like, just let it breathe, just let it breathe. And I, since then, I let it breathe. Yeah. That's it. I mean, you must be obviously. I, I don't, you know, like uh, do the filming and stuff, but I do. Anybody who knows me knows uh, I draw. I do a lot of artwork. Yeah, um, yeah. And I'm the same in the sense of like, it's knowing when to walk away. It's just mm. kind of like you know, I and can it's do hard. This, yeah it's hard because you want to do your own sort of like spin on it and then you're like you have to tell yourself no 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 because it's not just me who's going to be sitting i'm doing it but it's not me only me that's seeing it do you know what i mean and it yeah, is hard um i think it was a quote so i read it somewhere and i've kind of started using recently is that um no piece of artwork is ever actually ever finished it's just abandoned yeah um, that's so true absolutely <laughs> absolutely true. Uh, yeah so, but, but yeah, no, I can kind of relate to that where you just kind of like, one more, you've literally got to physically pull yourself away, be like, that's it, we're done. It's yeah, like, yeah. Ask the person, are you happy with this? Yes, right, sorted, bosh, that's it. Job's because, gonna... because, because actually, sometimes a little like highlight video, depends how much like editing and effects and stuff you put into it, can take longer than a full show. Okay. Like, is it because it's quicker cuts, kind of like you said, yeah, so more, see, so you, you, slim, you slim down your timeline and you do like, sort of millisecond instead of seconds so you're putting like effects within effects and like you're stretching it out and you're putting that there that there that there that there changing yeah so it you get yeah i could you could spend hours just on like five seconds sometimes depending on what you want the final product to look like but again i go not so much now i did adding too many effects and going oh we'll stick that there we'll stick that there oh let's put one of those in but it doesn't need it all the time honestly less is more <laughs> that's the thing sometimes but like i said you know it's just so easy just to especially now as well i mean i'm presuming you know the editing technology just keeps getting better and better and yeah better. There's, the, the temptations there to like get all the plugins in the world and have every effect in the world but just keep it simple just get what you need for the certain project in hand and the task in hand and just and just yeah. use it you don't need to go all guns blazing with it that was the mistake i made early on <laughs> but no, keep it simple that's it um so yeah because obviously i mean the actual the in-ring action is is the focus is it? you know you don't want to pull too much away from that so you know um plus you mentioned you got bwr this weekend so yep. first first show of the year um yep. obviously you said excited to be back um 
I mean, what kind of prep do you do before a show? Do you just pick up your camera and go, or no. is it a case of like, no. you've got so, so it's literally working until that first bell goes off. Like, the typical one would be I would rock, so shows at 7.30, I'd rock up sort of like 1, 2-ish. Um, I love BWR, by the way, because I don't live in Lincolnshire anymore, but my mum does. So I can stop off. She's on the way. So I can stop and see my parents on the way there. So it's cool. Um, but yeah, get there sort of like one, two-ish. Um, if they want some like interviews doing or some backstage stuff doing, I'll do that. Um, this week, for example, I'm doing something small with Robbie X before the show. He wants something doing. So I'll talk with him and then spend a bit of time with him. And then it's just a case of like making sure that um, the guys have got all the right entrance videos, um, any interim videos, the the show entry video, intro video, stuff like that. Make sure they've got everything they need. And then it's just yeah, just then it's sort of chill out time for a bit before um, show time, really. Nice. So do you go over obviously you know um, do you go over the matches with the guys beforehand? Do, you know they they highlight bits to you that they that <clears throat> they want captured in a certain way, or do they just trust you to work your no, magic? It it depends. Obviously, with one PW that was more of a thing where yeah, you'd get told of spots that are happening, and you'd be like, right, they're going to be here. Then just make sure your camera's there, for example. Uh, but BWR not so much. If someone has got something a bit a bit more abnormal, they're doing they're sort of hint hint before and have a quick word before they go out but no not really i could because bwr is always at kind of the same venue so i know where to be where to stand i know where they're going to be doing stuff so unless it's sort of out in the crowd up on the balcony or something like scotty did once i'm yeah. I'm going off the balcony you need to be here i was like all right cool but no not really sort of just sort of know where to be it's it's, it's weird i've only ever been hit by a wrestler once that was going to be another one, that a question that, <laughs> but like, you know, has the pay, you know, yeah, you know, obviously we saw it, like, it, it seems to happen all the time in WWF at one point, the poor cameraman just got blocked every week at certain points. Oh, no, sorry, twice. Twice, both at BWR. One from, um, I think it was Rogan, from recent Rogan. Ooh. Um, he clipped my, um, he come on, he come on the ropes too quick and he clipped my um, lens hood and he went, Kling! And then the other one was uh, Miles came and it was my fault. I was in the wrong place. But um, yeah, my camera shut off and I was bricking it. I was like, oh no, turned it back on. It was fine. It had saved fine. But other than that, no, nothing. I think, wow, no no flying feet, no sort of just people. Bro. No. That's good, man, because, you know, it, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous environment. It is, but you kind of, if you stick to your corners, obviously, if you know they're going to close line them over the rope, don't stand in the middle when they're near you. It's just, it, yeah. you get used to it, and it's common sense. You, you, you're good, to, anyone could do it, you're good to go if you just, you just know where to be. Yeah, that's it, I suppose. Again, you know, it's, it's all experience. It's all sort of, like you sort of said, you know, you kind of, especially with someone like BWR, it becomes second nature. You can yeah. kind of, you're just floating around, knowing exactly where to be, what moments to sort of, Based on what the guys are doing as well, obviously you work very closely with these guys, so you kind of you've seen them work over and over again. Yeah, yeah. So you get a feel for. But I just yeah, go on, just, just go on, go on. No, go on, dude. So I forgot what I was going to say. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> go on. Um, so obviously, um, yeah. So take BWR. Um, anybody there that's not to sort of play favourites or you know not put your spot but. <laughs> Is there anyone that you sort of like you enjoy that you know I think just enjoy to, there's, always wrestlers, there's always wrestlers I enjoy filming. Um yeah. uh, Robbie X is the main one. I love Robbie. Uh, everyone knows I love Robbie. Um but but again it's not just like um Will Cruz. I love Will Cruz matches because it's just different. Big yes. lad, flies, um power mo- yeah, he does everything. Um Again, you've got, yeah, do you know what? I've got loads of people I love filming. Um, Miles Cayman, I love filming because his facials are great. Uh, his movement's great. His reactions are good. His entrance is slow. And it's, it's, it's good. It's a good feel. It's the whole package, really. But no, everybody, every, everybody. Um, there's, I just love everyone. I love just like filming wrestling. There's no one I'm like, oh, do you know what I mean? There's no one. It's just, it's, it's just cool doing whatever match you're in. It's happening at the time. That's you just it. focus on the task in hand, don't you? That's it. So, yeah, um, perfect answer. You know, like you sort of said, it's just what you're doing is very, very cool, regardless of, you know, what the match is. You know, it's going to be a good match, good promotion. Um, so outside of BWR, are you kind of branching yeah. out? Is anybody else approaching you? Or 
Um, ooh. <laughs> so I, I do my um, local um, company um, in East Anglia, uh, where I am, is DOA. I do all their shows. Um, and Alec, the promoter there, is sound as a pound. I don't know how he's got to 100 shows under his belt. Um, but yeah, it does an amazing job. Um, kind of all over from Peterborough to Ipswich to Yarmouth, um, very St. Edmund. He's everywhere. Like, so no, he's doing really well. I love filming for them. It's just a fun day out. Um, I do uh, PWE in um, Cambridge, uh, Pro Wrestling East. Um, they have relatively lively crowd, you could say. They're crazy. Um, it's a different breed out there. I don't know. There's less people, but they are loud. They are honestly. They're it's it's some it's not like anything else. I don't get it, but it's fun. Um, the guys there have always been really good with me. Um, uh, in the past, I've done a few Rise Deathmatch tournaments. I want to do more as well. I was going to ask you if there's. Um, I wanted to sort of. Obviously, we were just talking about you know hazard pay. You know, being dangerous around the ring. I was going to ask if yeah. you filmed any sort of death matches. And were you mentioning obviously having a a liking for that sort of stuff mid nineties? Yeah. So, so I, was, yeah. I was up for it. Yeah. So I did um late. Uh, there was one in late 2021. I did um, in Leeds, and then I did the tournament of. Um, Ah, oh, what was it? I can't remember what it's called, but there's one they did in Hull um, in like 2020, mid, mid 2022. I did one of those. So yeah, I've done two for Rise. I, yeah, I like I enjoy both of those. To be fair, yeah. Also, um, we're we're based in Leeds, so yeah, I'm familiar with Rise. And I was going to sort of say like they were going to be one of the promotions. That I was just like, you know, I can just imagine that just being sort of very, very it, it, it weird is. but enjoyable. <laughs> It's the it's the when you're like a week later you're at work and you look down at your foot and you've got a pin in there tape stuck to your glass stuck and you have to pull them all out. <laughs> it's, I, uh, picture, it's like I, I pulled out my shoe one day. I I had took a picture of all the stuff I had to take out my shoe. I didn't realise for a week and I've got a picture of everything that was inside my shoe. I'll send you it. <laughs> wow, dude. Um, but was it at Brudenall where you when you filmed for Rise? No, it was at uh, Iger Studios. Yeah, I go. Cool, because um, uh, I know they've had a few different venues, but yeah, Bruno Knoll's sort of like uh, very much associated with Rise, but it's also very much associated with music and live gigs and sort of like... They, and did, stuff. they went back, they've done the last show there, right, I yeah. think? Yeah, 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 I think I saw some, some clips of it on YouTube. Um, yeah, I've never, yeah, I've never been there. I don't know, I don't have a clue about it, to be honest. I'd like to do another Rise show, though. It'd be cool. Oh, there we go. Um, so yeah, well, we can tick death match off. Um, yep. Any, any talents that you haven't had the pleasure of working with? That's kind of. Ooh. Right. To quote Jericho. Do you wrestlers have a list of people that they want to wrestle, you know, or promotions they want to promote, be booked at? Do you have uh, a list of talent that you want to film? Ah, uh, do you know what? There's there's a few that I would, but there's a few that I would because of my son as well. So I can tell him I've done it. He loves Orange Cassidy, right? Ah, uh, he's he loves him. So I'd like to feel I'd like to, at some point, yeah, Orange Cassidy is on there. Uh, but uh, I mean, I'd like to work with everyone. It's difficult, isn't it? Um, if there's one that I'd have to that I haven't, um, oh, this is difficult. Oh man, oh, you've got me here. Oh, <laughs> um, oh god. Uh, AJ Styles, it's got to be. Yeah. Oh yeah, I would, I would love to. Um, he's pro- yeah, but he's probably probably the one that I can think of at the top of my head anyway. Um, but in sort of British wrestling, I, I'm trying to think who who I haven't filmed who I'd like to. Um, there's got to be some, you know, when you put me in the on the yeah. moment, I just can't think. Oh man, if you'd have to be like, like walking oh. down the street. Honestly, if you'd have asked me just walking on the show, oh, yeah, duh, 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 I just can't think. It makes me think I know nothing about wrestling now, but it's not the no, case, I, I just can't think. think. <laughs> no, I know what it's like. It's like somebody class me, like, you know, give me your top five songs, and I'm like, oh, I can't, you know, oh, any I other know. time. Yeah. That's, that's um, another thing. Um, yeah, I, I, re, I like that uh, quote you did, the tool quote, the lyrics. Ooh, yeah. Yes. I, was, I didn't think you'd think I'd get that, but yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm a big fan, by the way. Um, I've been having for years. Yes, I was um, going to uh, bring that up at some point because I popped, you know, I, I, I put that on, like, I, <laughs> I randomly put tool lyrics on occasionally just to, just because I can. And it's, it's yeah. my way of like, assessing stuff. It's like, if somebody likes this, 
they automatically have the door up in yeah. my opinion. Sort of thing. So, but no, but no yeah. yeah, sort of. Um, oh God, I've been a fan of Tool for years. I, I could have got tickets to see him this year, and I kind of pulled out last minute. I don't know why. Um, I, I've never seen him, and they're one of the only bands that I'd want to see live. But I might, I'll, I'll get out and see him eventually, I'm sure. But no, um, favorite album, go. Um, it's not an album; it's the EP. I like Undertow and yeah. uh, Opeia. I can't even pronounce it, but Opeia to O P I A T E. It's the first two okay. EPs they okay. did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of that one, but I do like Undertow. Undertow's great because it's got the best song ever, "Sober" on it. Um, yeah. But I don't know. And oh, in Prison Sex, that's a great song. Um, I think Anima does it for me. Yeah. Or, that's true. Oh, no. oh, I don't know. Uh, I'll do, I'll do I? Hooker with a penis mm. is probably still my favorite. <laughs> I just, oh, just no. the anger of that song, just, just the genuine way, rage of him being accused that he sold out, man. That just that song just that's really pops me every time. See, because I'm not a big fan usually of progressive rock. Like normally, I got a time out and I get a bit bored of it. But Tool always sort of like, even though there were long songs, they like, like, draw you in. Um, and it was the lyrics. Maynard's amazing. Um, and it's the it's the off time like music, the off-time guitars, the off-time bass, the off-time drums. It just shouldn't work, but it does. I don't know what it is, but I've, al- I've always loved them. Yeah, no, but um, yeah, I've, I've never seen them live. I was thinking about this. I did see Perfect Circle, so I have experienced Ooh. Maynard's vocals live, nice. but it was with nice. Perfect Circle. That, another um, great band, to be fair. That that um, Their first album, Med and On, incredible. Yeah. Um, well, they became more tall than tall were at one point. You know, kind of like yeah. when tall kind of there was an album where they just totally went out there, uh, and then Perfect Circle kind of picked up the tall mantra, and it was like, oh, okay, fair enough. And then you kind of pulled it back again. So, um, the, the, if you like one, you like both. To be fair, yeah. There's not. Definitely. I don't know. I've, no, I've never met anybody who likes one and not the other. Never. <laughs> <laughs> it just wouldn't make sense, would it? Really? You're no, just like, no, not really. No, like, okay, right. That don't make sense. Um, well. Obviously, when you're editing, you know music. Um, do you yeah. are you in charge of music? Do you get told what music to to use, or do they be like, you know what, you've got you've got good taste? What well, we'll leave it to. You. <laughs> nah, some my friends take the mick out of me that I use heavy metal on it, everything, but I don't. As you see, if you go through my videos, it's very rare that I do. Um, I think it goes with resting really well, especially highlight package. It just works. Um, but I try to like do like cinematic slow music. I'll do a bit of hip hop. I'll do a bit of a bit of all sorts, really. It doesn't really bother me. No, no, I kind of get left to my own devices, and I love that. So I just most of the time use what I like. <laughs> if I get told to use something, I'll use it, but and make it work. But if I'm left to my own devices, I'll just put on what I want. It's the, the only best way, really. The only thing I've got as a sort of comparison is obviously I mess about with TikTok. I'll try and put like little highlight things together mm-hmm. just with the TikTok magic. But then I'm sat there. I'll probably spend longer trying to pick a song to go with it. You know, to play it to them and I'm actually doing the editing kind of thing. You you are right, honestly. That I sometimes picking a song takes longer than making the actual video. It does, it's true. It every, everyone will know what I'm talking about who does the same sort of thing. It's true. Honestly, picking songs is a hard graph sometimes just to get the right feel of it, the right mood. Um it, it's difficult. And obviously if you're uploading to YouTube, you've got all the copyright stuff as well and it's knowing yeah. sort of what you can get get away with as well. It's difficult. It is difficult. Um but once you've found something and it works, you're like, ah, oh, cool, okay. It's worth so, it. <laughs> do you oh god, that's the thing though, because I could imagine like, you know, you've done the editing and then you pick a song and it doesn't flow, so then you've got to re-edit it to the song. No, you got this is oh. it, you've got to pick the song first. Right. Oh, that's where I work. You've got to pick the song first because then you can you can Not work out where you're starting. You can look at. Um, I, I always try and make my, especially when I'm doing like an MV, like a, something like that. I'll always make it go with the music. So if there's like a boom, there'll be an impact, like a, a yes. super kick or something, or you just make it work like that. So you kind of go along the timeline. You you work it out. Um, there'll be some misplaced things because you have to put something somewhere. But yeah, you try and make it flow as best you can. It's difficult. It's it's fun though, but this is why it takes so long. <laughs> yeah, I can only um, right. Well, talking like music and videos, highlight reels. <clears throat> I'll get your opinion on this. Get a professional's opinion. Um, okay. If you, The Rock versus Austin, 
to limp this bit my way. That got to be one of the best, the best vignettes that I think I've ever seen. It, it still pops me to this day. I've seen it a hundred times. It's it's go. It isn't it. I think everybody will give you the same answer. Yeah, it's the best. It's the best. Do you know what? Like I said to you earlier, I was never a big fan of like the main eventers, right? But that that video and I was watching live got me pumped. It was incredible. The only other one I would say that got me like oh was um, Miz versus Cena to um, Naz hate me now at WrestleMania. I don't remember that one. Uh, oh, I think it. I, it's I, incredible. I, I dropped off. I dropped off a bit at that point. I think so. I never saw that one. That um, was su- such a good build to a main event. That was uh, that video was amazing. Uh, okay, I have to. Uh, that'll be my YouTube uh, research later then. Because yeah, uh, honestly, yeah, get on it. Again, I kind of just I, I hear the Miz and I just kind of switch off. But I'm being told to to look at it, so I'll uh, I'll, I'll go. Honestly, I'll go look at you it. won't regret it. I promise you, it's it's amazing. <laughs> um, but no, I I think um, every company does them sort of videos really well. It's it's all about that you can't ever get too much footage. You can never have too much. So I know it's not like money's not that you know to have like a crew and then an extra person getting footage is not always feasible, but it does it does help the more footage is yeah it's always always better because you've just got more you've got more places to go you've got the more footage you can pull off the better things will look you're not restricted so much to having oh i've got this to work with Mm, okay you know it's a tricky one but yeah just footage 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 is the key that's it but so again like you sort of said though you know that that would be awesome for like the highlight reels and stuff because like say you got the you can cut and x y and z um but when it comes to just filming a match you know like you sort of said sometimes less is more you know because you get away from having you know just a player witch style kind of thing (laughs) i I sometimes do shows with two cameras sometimes do with three um it's easier than three when you've got someone helping you because you, you don't move. You're one side of the ring. When it's two, you've got a half count and I'm running around like this. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a good workout. Um, but yeah, less is more. Like I, There's no need for like companies to have four, five, six cameras at a show. It's just overkill. Um, are you sort of finding now as well, though, obviously um, with like YouTube and streaming sites, and uh, you just mentioned like the half cam. Um, are the way that com- promotions filming shows has that changed in the last couple of years than what it was, you know, when you first um, started? Because of the really. more people, they're not working more to the hard cam to kind of get that real TV feel. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it's I mean, at these smaller venues, it's fairly obvious where there's a big camera, do you know what I mean? So the people who play up to the cameras more will be more aware of it. Um, but you can just work around it, you know, you've got more cameras there so you can get reactions if they're not. At the hard cam all the time so it's yeah if it's harder if you've got the hard cam plus the one camera if you're the other side now over that side of the ropes you know so then you're going to miss it which is a bit but then if you have someone following on hard cam you can zoom in you can get it so it's all to do with i say to um be adam at bwr all the time i wish i could clone myself i wish i could be three of me on the cameras but i can't it's yeah. <laughs> Because, yeah, kind of like most of the time you're onto a static hard cam that doesn't move because if it's just me doing it, and it's I'd rather someone be there moving it. So, you know what I mean? It yeah. just makes it look better. Um, but what, like I, I love the, that's why I like doing um, the things I did for uh, New Japan the other, the other month and Impact. I was just in the crowd, just getting shots. That's left to my own devices. It works. And I feel like no pressure. I just do my thing. Dude, uh, obviously was going to mention it at some point. Uh, that's two huge companies, to, you know, yeah. to, that have obviously, how did that come about? Did somebody put the word so, in for you? They... No, basically, so what it was, um, I <clears throat> I was making a, a video for Matt Hall and his crew who, who run Pixel 8 Productions. They do all the screens um, for all the bigger shows, right? They do all the light in the screens and everything. And he wanted a show reel doing. So I was like, oh, I'll come to a big show and I'll do it for you. And while I was there, he kind of like, oh, Mark's here with a camera. Can he just go and that's how, that's how I got in. It's, it's who you know. <laughs> but no, Matt, Matt has been incredible with me. He's uh, he's given me a lot of opportunities and I thank him all the time for it. Um, if it wasn't for him, I'd never have the chance by now, I wouldn't have thought. So thanks. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> but, but no, they, yeah, they, they were really cool. I want to say it's because I got I got posted. It's all my hard work, but no, it's it's 
I like to think oh, some of it is, but no, Matt is um, and team are to thank for that. To be honest, <laughs> they wouldn't have let put it. They wouldn't have let you do it, dude, unless they thought you could have done it. No, but it worked. It it, it turned up pretty well. To be fair, the response I got some of the videos was good as well. So yeah. hopefully it'll give me a, a few more opportunities down the line. Um, I've got something quite big uh, lined up. I don't think I can tell you. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. Lip sealed. Well, I'll tell uh, you. Just... I might, I might tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so no, no, whenever you can, let me know and I'll shout it from I the mean, rooftop. Yeah, but no, as far, as far as shows go this year, I'm just um, BWR. Um, I've obviously got the ones I've already mentioned. I'm doing my first show for uh, CXW there in um, uh, da, 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 Essex Way. Um, so I'm doing a few shows for them. Um, yeah, it's all busy, 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 busy. Nice. That's cool. And, um did you, I've got to ask, obviously you mentioned Robbie X earlier, you know, yeah, love yeah. of appreciation for Robbie. Um, that Will Osprey Robbie X match, you know, <laughs> yeah. did you, obviously you, you presume you were there on hand, yeah. camera. Yeah, How yeah. was that match to record? Oh, it was, yeah, it was good. I, that's the first time I filmed Will Ospreay. Um, first time I've seen him, first time I've, yeah, first time anything with him. And I was just like... <laughs> It's on another level, anyway. Really, just it's scary. <laughs> um, he just makes everything look so easy, and especially with Rob in there as well. Rob, he just moves like a machine. His uh, his footwork is <laughs> it's outrageous. How he's not been picked up yet, by the way. Um, but no, them two. Yeah, that was a great match. Um, and obviously, I've seen it probably more than anyone else because I put it together. So, um, yeah, it was really good. Um, it. I, d I didn't realise um, at the time. I thought that match was over really quick, and then I was, but it wasn't. It was a really long match. <laughs> I was like, that sped by. That's the thing, though. I think that's how good it was. Because I think I can yeah. remember being sat there. You know, I was live in in the audience watching it, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, every moment, you know, just like when they was in the corner, it that that felt like a lifetime, just a battle. But then yeah. it was like. The match needs to be over like that. He's like, oh, and then obviously I watched it again, you know, when it was uploaded. Uh, yeah. watched it numerous times. Uh, so you know, I can officially say kudos because I've watched that match so many times. Um, yeah. all the moments are spot on, captured perfectly. It was awesome. Uh, but yeah, it, it was it was a good length match, but it just went. I think both guys smashed it and were just like I think yeah. the the crowd the crowd are good, they were well into it as well. Um it just really worked, didn't it? I just it was a because the weird thing is, when I'm filming, I'm not really watching. It's it's weird. I've got the best kind of seat in the house when you're ringside filming, but I'm that focused. Like everyone takes the mic, I've got a focus face when I'm filming. Like I'm not going to show you it, but if, <laughs> next time if you ever see me, you'll see this focus face that I, that I pull. I don't think I do, but people have told me I do. Um, and you, yeah, and I was because you, you're in the zone, you kind of I forget moves, and it's only when I watch it back, I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I did. I can't remember any of that, but the big. The big thing for me is the entrances. I like to get entrances as best as I can. I think it's one of the most important parts, especially if it's going out for like a, a streaming sites or YouTube or whatever. Um, but yeah, that, is, that to me is really important. I, I love filming entrances because um, I think you can really get a grasp of someone's character just from their entrance to the ring before they've even done a move or done anything to the crowd. I think the yeah, entrances are key for well, me. That depends on the talent as well, though. If they totally embody the character, then, yeah, mm. their entrance, you can just tell straight away. It's like, I was going to bring him up at some point. It's like, I can just imagine uh, one of the best entrances is just, for me, is just Rampage. Just when he walks out, <laughs> it's just like, oh, shit. I am physically I mean, scared of that man. To, to with Rampage, it doesn't help that that um, his song by Hate Breed, I Will Be Heard, is one of my favourite songs. <laughs> so... I make sure I get that entrance always really well because I love that song. I have done for, oh God, since it came out, was it 20, 20 odd years ago? Yeah, 2002, Perseverance came out. God, God, I feel old. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I try not to think about when things came out anymore. Oh, mate, I can't believe that. 22 years ago, that album came out. Wow. Oh, my God. But yeah, Rampage is cool. Um, his, his whole, just, there's no nonsense to get in the ring. I'm here, you know? That's it. He's just he's just genuinely like I think he's you know the best this country's produced and he's just awesome. Uh but yeah, just when when you see him walk to the ring, he's just 
Like I say, any, anybody who comes out, yeah, he's just a business. He's just absolutely his bee's knees and his, and his elbows. He's just every single part of the bee. Um, yep. But yeah, the entrance, like I said, from a filmmaker's, well, from a cameraman's point of view, from a filmmaker's point of view, I suppose that's when you've got time, time to just focus. You know, you've got a couple of seconds, as long as they don't come pegging it out yeah. to the ring. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's why I mentioned. Um... I think I mentioned Miles Kamen's entrance earlier. He's really slow, methodical. He soaks it all in. His facials are great. Like he, I don't know. I don't know. I just like filming Miles Kamen because his, his face is ace. Like he just, if he's like when he's been chopped, he just sells it so well. Like he's just been fucking murdered, you know? <laughs> and yeah, these these slow methodical walks to the ring, just winding the crowd up. It's milking it. It just, it just works. I love it. But then you've got uh, fast, fast-paced people like Scotty Rock who just runs past you, and you're like, "Oh, shit, you know, where's he gone?" <laughs> there we go. Yeah, just like a fire trail behind him. Oh, yeah, there we go. He always runs past me. I always miss him. Always got like, half his face cut out. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with him. Um, certain moves, man. Is there like certain moves that just you look forward to capturing? Uh, just mentioning Scotty. You know, yeah. I, I can't remember what he caused the move, but his black mass. I just think always looks mint. You know, when it's caught right on camera, you know, that's been know what, I don't know what I should know if he's got a name for it. I should know, but I don't know. I, th- I really don't know. Um, I'm, maybe I'm, black yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but no, move wise, um, ooh, I, I like anything off the top rope, me. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for anything on the outside or over the ropes or on the ropes. Um, but cool moves, like I love old school moves, really. I love the, um, I, I don't see it at all, but I love the power driver. Um, any form of power bomb, I love it. Um, Canadian Destroyer, not so much. Uh, it's been a bit butchered. Um, but anything cool, any, anything that looks cool and is done well, you know, if it hits the money and it looks real and it looks like it hurt, you know. I think, you know, you've mentioned him, um, I'm going to mention him because I'll try to mention him whenever I can, Mr. Yeah. RJ Singh. Um, the man yeah. who is bringing back the DDT, um, just moves like that. I think you know if they hit right and they, and they captured right, just look I mean, kind of thing. I think and, a good and DDT. You know, and you know when it's hit, ain't no one getting up from it. As soon as it's it's locked in, done, it's it, it's it's over. Um, RJ, yeah, RJ's cool. I like RJ. Um, I film him at um, East Pro Wrestling East champion there, isn't he? So well, he was champion. He lost it, but yeah. He's a, yeah, I enjoy filming him quite a lot, actually. Um, but move, yeah, moves, um, anything, anything with impact, power bombs, you know, just something that like, just throw them and launch wow. people. I'm not, any, anything with impact that looks good on a video, like that I can move the camera and make it look fancy. Um, yeah, just, just anything move wise. I'm not, to me, wrestling's never been about, about the moves. That's the thing. It's just, that's just, there isn't it as part of the package but like i said to you earlier but it's all about the whole, the, the whole package the entrances the the, pe- the personality the storyline um it's, yeah moves are like the i think piece, piece it all together but i don't, know, part, I don't get you, too drawn into moves so uh, i just thought you know from like messing about like camera like i say you know i mentioned scotty's kick i could just imagine sitting there like trying to you know, just like slow mo it, you know, just that moment of impact kind of thing. And yeah, like, yeah. So, so I try, so I try to do it on videos where you like you slow it down on impact or you speed it up um, depending on what what vibe you're going for. Um, but yeah, it's, you kind of I don't get too the core but moves. If it, if I'm going through like a show and I'm putting a highlight video together, I will scroll, scroll, scroll along. I kind of you know skim past bits really quick. If something just stands out, I'll be like, and it was kind of I was at the right angle, I'll use it. Um, if it was like the best move ever, but I didn't get it, I won't use it. Um, yeah, it's all, it's just sp- it, like in the moment as well, just on that day when I'm putting it together, yeah, that looks all right, let's put it in. Or that was like, oh, I don't know, that looks a, a bit to the side there, that won't really look very good, I can't really salvage it. You know, it's kind of just, yeah, you just go along and whatever feels right at the time, I suppose. That's it. Like, so I said one thing, Mike, I think that's, key is how you're feeling on the day you know you're going to like something more one day than you might do another day um mm. it all depends on how you're feeling at the time you might be in a, in a mood for a certain something and you might right yeah. on this day that 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 makes the cut that works 
Um, it's like films, you know, it's just like anything in general, you know, one day you might be in the mood for, you know, like Sin City, one day you might be in the mood for Pulp Fiction, you just got these different you're, genres. You're, you're going to hate me, I'm not into, like, uh, superhero films at all, I'm not into, like, any of that. No, 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 no it's fine, but I was thinking more like the black and white sort of simple course, and then you got Pulp Fiction, yeah, yeah. which is yeah, more just drawn out, you know, cuts, you know, you've got drawn out shots kind of thing. As, as I've got further into it, I, I, when I'm watching a series on Netflix or a film, I'll always like look at sort of the lighting, the camera, the, the angles, um, how they shot it, where imagining where the cameras are going to be on that particular shot and how they've set up. My brain's always, yeah, it's always taken. I can't really watch the stuff in the right way anymore. It's, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> wow. No, yeah, that's, that's what I was saying before. It kind of ties into the question I was asking about watching wrestling. So obviously for you, mm -hmm. it's not just watching wrestling, it's watching anything. You know, I say you're watching yeah. a film, you're watching a TV series, yeah. your brain's just production mode. And then and then I'll be like um, in bed at night watching YouTube um, and I'll put on like um, someone setting up a camera and my wife has to sit there and watch it and she's there like, what are you doing? What are you, what are you watching? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just just doing some research just it's fun it's my it's fun for me you know <laughs> no i get that it like is. i said man, it's, it's how you learn you know if you can pick up a, a trick or a trick here or a trick there yeah um that's it you know people who i know people who knit watch knitting videos you film stuff so everyone's you watch got, videos everyone's got their thing aren't they yeah everyone's got their thing exactly um so I'm sorry, I'm just thinking about films and stuff now because, like I said before, I'm just, <laughs> of film so I'm just trying to think, like, you know, but um, again, I think of a certain age, um, you'll probably appreciate then, like, the I want to say, like, Snake Eyes, Nick Cage, like, the opening scene was like a 26 minute one shot, That's just be, walking yeah. alongside. Yeah, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm not really a film person. I'm, I appreciate films and I like watching them, but I just, I'm one of the people that I can't watch a film more than once. If I know what happens, I can't. Oh, okay. I just can't watch. I can't watch it. And it's only certain films like old, old school nineties, like uh, comedies. Anything with Jim Carrey, I can watch a million times. Um, but yeah, just super serious films are like that. I can. I, and Star Wars is probably the exception. I watched Star Wars more than once. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a big filmy, to be honest. Okay. I'm not know, into I think... series. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I think I've got doing what you do is got to go one way or the other. You know, I was going to bring up films and I could have lost you for like 60 minutes just talking about, you know, films and directors <laughs> and stuff. Or you could have just got been like, don't really do. You know, I've just, I'm yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not a film. I've never have been really. I've never been a filmy. Um, I'm, I was never big going to the cinema when I was younger either. I just, oh. I never was in the mood. Just, I, did, I didn't get that excited about films. I don't know what it is, but I don't know. It might change. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think it's one of those things you either do or you don't. You know, there's no wrong or right yeah. answer. Like so, so when, you know, I was, when, I, when I was younger, I was just obsessed with wrestling. You know, um, yeah. big, I'm a big football football fan as well. Um, so football took up quite a bit. I do. Um, I'm still a football coach to this day. I coach my son's football team. Um, so that takes up quite a bit of time as well. Matches on a Sunday, training on a Friday. Um, so I'm just busy all the time. It's good though. Are they not ask you to film the matches? You know, do you find no, yourself recording no, them just no, uh, for footage? Uh, no, you're not allowed. Oh, of course, yeah. So yeah, yeah, because of filming kids. You basically you can you can film on your phone um, if you're okay it with the um, opposition and the parents who are watching. If they okay it, you're allowed to do clips on your phone and stuff. But you're not allowed to like rig up the kit with like. Uh, you know. <laughs> no, you can't wow. do that. Yeah, I totally. I didn't even think. You know, I should have thought but before asking that question. Really, given, yeah, you know, no, the uh, no one thinks. No one thinks. I, honestly, all the parents get a phone. I think start doing them, and then they have to get mm. told, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I get that. Why that would be? Yeah." So they, no yeah. one realised at the time. But um, yeah, so obviously, yeah, BWR uh, this Saturday. Yes. Um, yeah. So I've seen a few yeah. matches announced. Um, shout out to Hack and Slash, who I think are making their <laughs> BWR your, debut. Your, your boy Brand. Your boy Brandon. Yes, my boy Brandon and <laughs> Mr. Vertigo what? as well. Do you know what? I've seen Vertigo once. He looks, yeah, he looks, he looks, he looks good. Um, but um, Brandon, <laughs> he's not, such a nice guy. I love him. I see. I had a pleasure nice talking guy. to him, you know, a while ago. Um, and Joe you know, just clicked over comic books and stuff like that. So we we'll keep talking. Um, I'm just happy for him to, <laughs> you know, like say, be on the show. Uh, yep. I say Vertigo's awesome. 
and it looks like a banging tag, uh, tag match as well, to be fair. It's a, it's a gauntlet match, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got a oh, second you've got Matt Myers. Matt Myers yeah, and yeah. Nathan Stevens there. Oh, I've, not seen, I've not seen Matt Myers in ages. Jesus. Um, him, yeah, him and Nathan. Who else you got? I'm trying to think now. I should know this. <laughs> I really should know this. Um, oh, you've, well, you, you've killed me. My mind's gone dead tonight. I can't think. <laughs> hang on. Someone, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's late, it's late. Hang on, let me go to Facebook. Hang on. Here we go. Mm-hmm. So you've got, oh, that's it. Uh, Jimmy McCook, Cohen Dara Diablo, they're cool. Um, you've got the Row Bros and their brothers who uh, came up from Evo, who um, I've seen a few times. Uh, they're decent. Violence Party and uh, the Go and Butcher. Yeah, Violence Party, obviously, you've seen them numerous times at True Grit. Uh, I know, yeah, of course you would. Uh, yeah. They've worked BWR a lot as well. Um, that should be a hell of a match. To uh, you've got a lot of contrasting styles in there, and uh, I can right. imagine that being a lot of fun to record. <laughs> oh, it's, good. it's a good job. To just, it's a good job. It's a gauntlet match, and they're not in there together, really, isn't it? <laughs> At the same time, you got. Oh, I don't know. I mean, will you get the entrances? Will it be a gauntlet? Are they just going to peg it to the wing? Are you going to get time to appreciate a good entrance? <laughs> I think they'll, I hope some will be methodical. I think they'll wait for it, their whole shoot. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a bit of an intro. I can get ready and get, get in position. Yeah, I'm sure. Just tell yeah, them. I don't, think, I don't think they're going to storm out, are they? Well, I hope not. I hope they're a bit more careful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting old. I can't, I can't move up. I'm not as quick as I used to be getting out of the way. <laughs> Dude, just put your foot down. Be like, look, no, respect my dog. No, for the sake of the cameraman, just chill out. <laughs> they need to. They need to, but that much should be good. You've also got um, Reese and Rogan, who I know you're a fan of. Yeah. Uh, against Robbie and Blake, uh, which would be good. Uh, what else you got? Oh, oh, Connor. Yeah, Scotty versus um, Jack Jester for the title. Oh, th- this is one I'm looking forward to. Miles versus Amir Jordan. I love Amir Jordan. Um, his entrance. Now his entrance. <laughs> there you go. Amir Jordan's entrance is amazing. Um, he milks it. But it is good. <laughs> um, and he's such a nice guy. Um, and that's all I've got at the minute. I can't. Yeah, I think that's it. That I've got at the minute anyway. But no, it would be a banger. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's been a, it's been a while. I can't wait to get the old cameras back out and uh, see what I can do. But no, um, I just love BW. I can't talk about them enough. They're, they're great. Yeah. They've always that's been good. Like, Adam, Adam has always been good to me. It sort of just lets me get away with just yeah, do what you want. Just I know I trust you. You know what you're doing. That's it, man. That's that's what you get. You know, after a certain amount of time, after you know years of doing what you're doing, do you you earn that trust? See, that's it. Yeah. You... When you're chopping and changing like people like behind the scenes, it, it's good to find new things out. But when you've got like you, you rock up and you know the ref's going to be, you know who's going to be filming it, you know who's going to be emceeing, you know, do you know what I mean? I think it just works better. When you've got a team on board, and they all know each other, and obviously one, one nature. P, well, well, one PW was basically BWR. Everybody who works at BWR, everybody from the merch, from me to the cameraman to the ref, backstage, youngie um, behind us, all BWR. Nice. Well, that's again, you know, I've bigging up BWR earlier. That speaks volumes. That you know, because. Um, you know, again, regardless of what happened, anybody who went mm. to a 1PW show or saw a 1PW product will vouch for it was high end, man. That was like quality stuff. So, the fact that everybody, it, honestly, everybody gave their all to it. And when it all came to an end like that, was, it wasn't just me that was good, it was everybody because we'd all, we all put in a lot into it, you know. Um, and yeah, I think I mean, I mean, looking back. It, it did look really good and all the shows were sold out. Um, everyone had a good time and that's what it's all about. Wrestling. Wrestling. Yeah. Wrestling. <laughs> you are talked, we've gone over the hour mark, so I won't take more of your time up. Um, I wanted to kind of close it on the, obviously this Saturday's BWR show, you know, yep. I hyped that up. Um, we've talked, you know, we've just announced what matches are going to be on there. Also, there'll be a few more matches. Um, obviously, if you don't have a ticket, go get a ticket, get yourself to the show. It's going to be that, awesome. You can, I think it's sold out. Was it? it sold out? Was it sold I'm out? Sure wow, it right. 
Or I wrote to them. They, um, they, they, always, they always sell out. That Cleethorpes, honestly, that crowd is crazy. It's I love it. It's, it's very often. It's not very often they don't sell out. That's good. Um, they're that, they're rabid up that, there. You find that more and more. You know, when I speak to people, you speak to promotions, you know, there's very rarely now is a show... Yeah, you've got tickets that left on the day kind of thing. So I remember a time when you could go to a wrestling show on the day, just buy a ticket on the door. Yeah, you just you, rock, you rock up and you get in, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can't take that only, I think it's only, it's only going to get better as well. I think that this whole um, WWE moving to Netflix is amazing. It's going to get more eyes on the prize. It's just going to, it's good for businesses. I think it's going to really, really help. I hope so, anyway. agree. Yeah, no, I thought, I don't, it's not going to do any harm, is it? No, not 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 at all. I mean, the, the amount of like people it's available for is crazy compared to what it was. So hopefully, fingers crossed. It's all wrestling is just great, isn't it? I I say I hate it. I hate it and I love it. I don't know. <laughs> it's a bit of sweet relationship. It's just uh, it's all good. It's all it, good. But it makes you work for it. That's the thing. It's like one of those relationships yeah, yeah. that makes you work hard, but it's worth it. Yeah, no, it's good. I enjoy it. I do it. I wouldn't do it if I didn't. That's it. Dude, um, tell people where they can um, find your stuff. Um, obviously, Mark Cassidy <laughs> Films. Not, not. Not, not, the, not the porno Big Willy though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not Mr. Dingerling. Um, it's just Mark Ashley Films, yeah. Um, Facebook, Twitter, X, sorry. Um, uh, Instagram. Yeah, give us a follow. Just might be some stuff that you like. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Have a look. Have a gander's. <laughs> it'll always be Twitter dude I refuse to call it X it I know I know it it's just lazy but like, oh we're going to we're going to rebrand what shall we call it X yeah. like, seriously like you know it's like calling your kid Aaron it's the first name in the book <laughs> <laughs> to be fair to be fair X is pretty shit I, I, I think it works to be fair I, I, I don't hate it but I also don't <laughs> like it it's still Twitter isn't it yeah exactly um, obviously <laughs> Um, I will tag you in everything when I upload this video as well. So if cool. you're not following already, obviously click follow. Uh, when I treat stuff and upload this episode, uh, as always, hit like, hit subscribe, share, comment, um, do whatever you can do to spread the word. Um, keep your eyes peeled for future guest announcements. Uh, I'm pretty much fully booked up till the end of March now with a shed load of awesome talent. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. And thank you for watching, and we will speak very soon. Bye-bye.